денег не будет. Давай, 
Первое, смотрим как. Ага. Подожди, нет, они стоят, они не могут вправо, влево, надо чем-то ручками там вот такое.
и отомстите. Посильнее, посильнее. Класс, неплохо. И теперь буквально вам надо такую штучечку. Вот вы все сидите на прекрасных креслах, когда вы за ним присаживаете видели, что под креслом есть наклейка с надписью «Место», но еще под одним из ваших кресел есть наклейка с надписью «Приз». Кому достанется, честно не знаю. Вернее, даже не скажу. Поэтому встаньте, посмотрите.
Good afternoon and a warm welcome back to the Gymnastics Palace here in Kazan, Russia, home to this year's 14th World Wushu Championships. We've seen some fierce competition from all over the world throughout the week and today will be no different. My name is Mario Martinez and I will be one of your commentators for today. And alongside me, I have Canada Wushu's own Alan Tang. Alan, great to be back with you and let me ask, what did you think of yesterday's performances? Yesterday we had some formidable um, competition in women's Nanguan and in addition to the men's Nantran events here on field of play number two. In addition, uh, field of play number one, we witnessed uh, women's Tai Chi Chuan in addition to the men's Tian Shu or the straight sword. We've got a couple of different events going in field of play two. We are going to be starting off here shortly with men's Tai Chi Tren, followed shortly thereafter by women's Nandao, and then we'll be closing out this afternoon with women's Daoshu. And over with our fellow commentators in uh, field of play number one, they will be conducting the women's Tianshu straight sword, and as well the men's 
Gwenshu or the uh, staff. So uh, lots of events here on day number four. Time is flying by here at the 14th World Wushu Championships in Kazan, Russia. But we're glad uh, that uh, those of you uh, that can join us here on YouTube channel IWUF Space Wushu. And of course there you can see our world medal Wushu Championships rankings. China currently in the lead with five gold medals. Hong Kong with two golds, one silver and one bronze. And then Indonesia in the third place with one gold and three silvers. Yesterday we had some incredible performances in the southern events, particularly in the men's divisions, where once again we witnessed the uh, strength of uh, this year's field. Uh, the winner coming out of uh, that event was a remarkable performance by China's athlete, followed by impeccable performances by both um, the uh, Vietnamese athlete and as well um, the Iranian national champion uh, Farshad Arabi. As the judges uh, march out uh, to begin uh, today's events, we have a start list of 22 athletes in the men's uh, Tai Chi Chuan, uh, including uh, several um, favorites, including China's own Shen Hung Yang and Japan's Tomohiro Araya. Who else can we look for in this uh, field, uh, Mario? So we've got a couple of competitors from, we've got one competitor, two from Indonesia, a couple from Singapore, and then some from Hang, Hong Kong. Jia Hong Zhuang should be able to put out a very stellar performance. And then we've also got Russia's own Ivan Krasnobev uh, taking us in the lead in, towards the tail end of the competition. He's our 22nd competitor. And uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, Tai Chi is uh, one of the three styles of uh, wushu in Taolu competition, uh, identified by slow, graceful movements and powerful, explosive jumps and uh, balances. It is uh, uniquely uh, on its own, um, identified by very, very difficult uh, strength maneuvers uh, for the legs. Uh, each routine is typically uh, between uh, two and a half minutes for the weapons and closer to five minutes for the bare hand routine. And Alan, we're on our fourth day of competition and a lot of these gents have had to wait this long, I'm sure anxiously waiting for their event. That's right, and uh, over these uh, five days, uh, we have seen the best in the world at this uh, World Wushu uh, Championships uh, in all of the uh, 11 uh, main disciplines. Uh, and obviously on our last day, we will as well have the four traditional events and the Dui Lian, or the choreography uh, events. Now, of course, if you're checking us out on YouTube Live, you can also check our other social media feeds. We'll be posting interviews, short snippets of the day's events, in addition to a, a ton of pictures and a ton of different updates throughout the competition. You can check us out on our Instagram feed at IWF underscore official, at our official Facebook page at International Wushu Federation IWF dash official, and of course you can check us out on YouTube Live at IWF Wushu. Make sure that you subscribe so you can get all those updates. Get all of the updates from each day's events, in addition to interviews from the athletes. Netherlands, judge number nine, Kuang Yuanyuai Macau. Athletes, please enter the arena. And here are the athletes as they begin their marching to salute the judges. As, as with all uh, Chinese martial arts, the respect, the discipline is very, very, plays a very important role in uh, the training. And uh, each competition is always uh, started off with a general salute between the athletes and the chief referee. The palm and fist uh, salute representing a control of the mind, a uh, respect for the discipline uh, involved with the art form. 
And as they uh, leave the uh, competition floor, they will warm up and uh, get ready for their competition. Taolu competition is a presentation of individual routines, whereas the athletes display their control, their coordination, agility, and their choreography in presenting their respective martial arts style within a uniquely put together routine, which comprises of the strikes, the stances, the blocks, and the application of movement in a routine format and obviously is highlighted by difficulty components which are able to really showcase the physical abilities of these athletes. We see our first competitor here standing by. We'll be underway shortly. This is Abbas Touré. Oh, actually, uh, sorry, there was a dropout. So this is our athlete from Hong Kong Tak Yan Hui. Hong Kong always having a very, very strong national presence. Their Wushu team is a um, professional team. Training specifically for the competitive level. We have represented athletes in various disciplines. And here we are in the men's Tai Chi Chuan or the bare hand Tai Chi event. In competition, uh, Wushu competition, the Tai Chi event is choreographed uh, by the athletes and they identify with the various different styles of Tai Chi, which are composed of for example, the Wu style, the Yang style, Chen style, and Sun style forms of Tai Chi. Those are the traditional grassroots basis of Tai Chi uh, events. But in Wushu competition, they take elements from each of these events and uh, portray them in this four minute routine. Mario, what's the uh, specific guidelines in terms of uh, the time frame? I know that uh, in other styles of uh, wushu competition, it's typically 1 minute and 20 seconds, but in Tai Chi, they have their own specific um, regulations. Uh, in uh, weapon forms, it's approximately 2 minutes and 30 seconds for the straight sword. And in the hand form, uh, the regulations, I believe it's between 3 and 4 minutes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So, whereas some of the northern styles and southern styles, Chang Chuan Nunch and some of the other events, non-internal events, are a bit longer. Tai Chi a bit Chen, shorter, actually. <laughs> yeah, shorter. These require a lot more strength and endurance, muscle endurance, as you'll see some of our competitors exhibit. There you see the opening sequence for a Hong Kong competitor. And they have their very own unique set of difficulty components. That was a front jump kick into an outside drop, okay, and uh, in the Mandarin... Just looking at some of the highlights of that routine. Good control of the sword, do you think, Anthony? Yeah, definitely a lot of control on her sword. You see your teammates in the back row, with Brian Long. So, 8.97 is the opening benchmark. So next up, to see whether she can better that. Of course, uh, whether it's above or below, it's still going to be the second ranking. Two points on a straight line. Make the variance. Paloma Panos Mia from Spain. And this is her first appearance at the World Wushu Championships. Relatively new athlete. Just a quick glance over to her coach to make sure she can enter the match. Enters from the right side. Nice drop stance. 
High enough on the jump then? From this angle, looks like it. For the balance in. One leg balance. And keep in mind, the athletes don't only have to do jumps for Nandu, they can also do balances. Right. If you can do yeah. it, yeah. it makes it easier. And those are the difficulty movements into the cross leg sit. End to the routine. Paloma Panosmia from Spain. So, two good performances to kick off the women's Jiangsu competition on day four of the 14th World Wushu Championships. 8.69. Four deduction codes. One of them being the 61 deduction code, which is very common in straight sword, and that's when the finger touches the blade. Right. And it looks like she has a 73, which means she's the judge just caught her hitting herself with a sword. And once again, that's just a great insight into exactly the micro analysis that these judges um, are viewing these competitors. Here's Emily Manling Wong from Canada. Like the previous athlete, she this is also her first international appearance. So debuts for a lot of these ladies. And Emily gets into her First jump, cartwheel. Nice twenty to sixty. Okay, jump outside through sixty. Jump inside splits. Uppercut and the parries. A number of different sword work maneuvers that need to be incorporated into the routine, along with, as you said, the jumps, balances, and stances as well. And this is a nice rhythmic routine that we're seeing from Emily Manling Wong. Closes it. One leg balance. Cross leg balance, sorry. Good level of competition. We'll see if she can break the nines. That's right, we haven't had a, a nine yet. 8.97 for Alyssa Lowe. 8.69 for Paloma Panos Mia. Nine yet to be set. And of course, this third 
score will set the bar for bronze. Now, up next is Zara Kiani, and she is one of the most up-and-coming stars in Talu, and definitely one of the most decorated stars out of Iran. 17 medals to date at the Junior Worlds, Asian Junior World Championships and World Wushu Championships, and that's how she became, got that title. But a lot expected of her, and she also was the, at the 13th World Wushu Championships, the first ever Iranian female athlete to win a medal at a World Wushu Championship. She's already competed this week in the uh, Chanchuan, got a 10th rank with a 9.42. Jump outside 540, nice. Sprightly step. Very nice control on the air. Uh, Well, it's dramatic, it's not flat, and it's combat. I think we might just possibly see our first line. Solid performance, yeah. Zara. So she has been racking up the medals. And I wonder if she's going to get to back up that 13th World Wushu There's Championship medal. Sequence right there. That was nice. Yeah. Now, we were talking, especially during the... Um, well, 9.56, we were talking earlier this week about how, depending, especially with Sangchu or with uh, Sangchu, the, the staff, or the spear, sorry, that the spear height would would change uh, in terms of your height as well, so you had, you had to be right. specific. Does that also apply to Jansu? Yes, definitely applies to all the other weapons. Now, if the athlete's holding the uh, weapon facing upwards with the tassel down, the sword has to go up to the tip of the ear. The right, top of the tip. Right. Of the so this is Juliette Vauche from France. She's been practicing since she was five years old. That's why I heard from one of the French Wushu team members, former Wushu team members. A lot of these Wushu practitioners do start very early. Gets that flexibility in. So Zara Kiani with the 9.56, that set the new gold level. And that would mean Melissa Lowe's 8.97 is currently in silver. And Payoma Panos Mia is in the bronze medal position. Oh, quick hands. Balance. Now, if anyone new to Taolu and think that they possibly something quite familiar about this specific discipline, of course, great movies, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, for example, really brought um, Wushu, not just Wushu, but of course, Jansu itself, uh, to almost global recognition. That was one of the bigger films to go around the world. Chinese cinema has, of course, been highlighted in Wushu for many, many years now. Yeah. One of the biggest stars, of course, Jet Li, who 
always his action. IWUF ambassador now. He, as we look at the highlights from Juliet's routine. He's very agile with their sword. Eight point seven five in the end. We're looking at those deductions, Anthony. Looks like she has two deductions based off her horse stance. And uh, looks like she missed one of her her jumps or not do. Right. I believe that was the 540. Lost point four five. So now this is Yi Li. Yi Li, of course, as you told me earlier, with the gold medalist at the first Taolu uh, World Cup and also this week got a bronze medal already in the bag in Chanchuan with a 9.64. Strong competitor. Very sharp opening sequence. Jump outside 540. Actually cleared that. Very nice jump. Yeah. See yeah. her kicks are a little bit higher today. Yesterday she got deducted for a kick, kicking height. So actually working on yeah, the... Vi that's visibly higher. That's great. Not just control of the body, but actually adjusting to fit based on her current form. Incredible stuff. She's tracing great lines with that jump. Very good great form. Stuff. Wow, that's a very solid routine from Yi Li from Macau. She'll have to top 956 if she wants to go gold. As we said, she's had a 964 already this week. See if her own personal best at the 14th World Wushu Championships is going to be bettered. And once again, of course, if you do want to see that uh, women's Chanchuan tournament, as I said, just get yourself onto the other videos on the IWF YouTube channel. You see some of her teammates in the background. 9.55, very close, but it's Zara Kiani that is still in the lead. But of course, this means that Ely has now taken the silver medal position, and that means that. Alyssa uh, Lowe's 8.97 is the new bar for medals. This is Lisa Derringer from Switzerland. She's a long-time competitor, been competing since the ninth World Wushu Championships in Beijing. It's a lot of experience. Before we jump inside, looks like she just landed that. Yep. Jump front aerial. Jump inside through six C splits. the wrist work that is so important in Jansu. Powerful wrist, but also a flexible wrist.
nice steady rhythm throughout her routine. Really taking the effort, making the effort to get all those moves as clinical as possible. Do you see any obvious deductions there, Anthony? Uh, looking, uh, look at the highlights. I think her kicking height might be a little bit low. Right. in her form. Yeah. So Lisa Derringer from Switzerland awaits her result from the judges. Eight point four two. So no change to the medal positions as of yet. Maybe that will change with the entrance of Kimberly Makua from the Philippines. You can just see her at the corner of your screen. She's about to enter the mat from the far most right corner. She was a strong competitor at this year's SEA Games, which you were just at, right, Kevin? Yep, that's right. The 11 nation tournament. This will make it her second international competition. Good line on that. And that's her balance. There you can see the difference between Jiansu and Daotsu. A lot more flower movements, a lot yeah. more cloud movements, more parries. Very nice. following the sword and just one I think you said it earlier in the week an extension of the arm is what the sword should be the sword point empty and that was the beginning of the combination to end her routine Back at that routine now. A lot of speed in here. Yep. Pretty qu quick with her wrist. As you said, it's a lot of precision in that wrist movement. A lot more than Grotzer had. Nine point four one for Kimberly McCoy. Yeah, it's like with one deduction, a sixty-one. And that's the finger touch of the blade. Which we've actually seen a couple of times already today. Right, very common in this routine. So, still, Zara Kiani, the starlet from the Iranian Ushu community, is leading the way with a 9.56. 9.55, just 0 0.01 behind her is Mikhail Zigili. And the new third bronze level, I should say, is 9.51 for Kimberly Makua. And up next, here is Ain Fun from Malaysia. So we said earlier, the Malaysian team had a great day yesterday. Three medals picked up. Gold, a bronze. A gold, I think it was a... Gold and a bronze in the men's Jiansu. 
women's version of this and also a bronze in the women's Nangun. This is one of A. Ying Fun's stronger events. She placed fifth in this event, the 9.5 at the 12th World Wushu Championships in Malaysia. Very nice combination. Very sharp performance by Aeyn Kun. And she concludes her routine. The bar has been set high now, all three medals in the nine category. Very fluid. That puts her in third placing. That's right, that's the new bronze medal level. So a good level of competition so far. We've seen the first nine competitors. This is Cathy Delogne from Belgium. This is also her first international appearance. Now, we have talked earlier this week about footwork in these various disciplines. Any specific footwork needed for Jiansu? Usually you'll see the routines have a lot of quick movements, like right here. It might be very agile, a lot of dexterity. So here is Cathy Delone's balance. wielding the sword, and there's that straight line. It's a good example of keeping that line straight, arm and sword. Belgium. This is her routine. As we saw in her other routine, uh, she did not put any difficulty movements. Yeah. So that made it's going to immediately, yeah, going to cut off a couple of points. Now, I was saying earlier that Jet Li, the famed movie star, of course, is the only man to have won five titles. 6.28 for Cathy Long, he's not going to get her the medals, but he has, he's always on hand when the World Wushu Championships turn up, and of course, in his opening message for this tournament, he stresses about this 
specifically winning a medal. It's about being connected to the Wushu community. Uh, something he has stressed throughout his entire career, both on the mat and of course in the movies. This is with Myla Temna from Ukraine. First time we're seeing her this week. Yep. But this is not her first World Youth Championships. She's been in the last two scoring seventh place. Twice. Top 10 finisher. That's exactly what I was saying. And the top 10 finisher is still highly recognized. And the outside splits. Very uncommon. And risky. is making sure the, the line is completely straight yeah. from the front and to back. Most deductions with a slight bent knee. Let's so will she get the required well, 9.53 and that's the new bronze medal level it puts her into third spot you can see that like she pushed a down. Yep, yep. It's no very close around that. Yeah. Come on. At this point, Nathan cannot make a deduction. Yeah. It's top three. And this is might be a very good performance from Korea's Heeju Seo, not just because the Korean team, of course, have really been making an impact with their performances. She placed seventh in the women's chan chuan with a 9.45. Let's see if she can better that here. In she the is Jones. the defending champion for this event. She placed first in the last World Lucia Championships. Oh. Let's see if she can get herself another gold medal. Opened well. Very nice. out her routine. I wonder if this is going to push the bar up even more. Currently it is 
by the Denyla Temna from the Ukraine. Again, the medals, and of course, a 9.56 from Zara Kiani. Here's the goal. That's now been moved up 9.65. Is that the first place? Yep, yeah, it's a new gold medal standard. And Zara Kiani is. Well, that's really pushed the level yeah. up because, of course, I mean, Zara Kiani is now second with 9.56 and 9.55 <laughs> is Yi Li. So, tight competition here. She's definitely defended her title for now. Exactly. So, here's Denise Avina Mendez from Mexico. You will see a lot of the Mexican team and contingent in action today. Close enough to her body? Close. It looks like her power may be slightly be, lacking, yeah, though. Yeah. As you said uh, earlier in the week, it's the impression it gives as well. So mm -hmm. the lack of power might make it look just a little bit further away. Unlike Daozu, though, of course, it doesn't have to wrap itself around the body. It's a double-edged blade, so it has to right. just be close enough. Because if they tried wrapping, they I cut themselves at this point. Exactly, which is <laughs> self-defeating style, really. Now a single-edged curved blade, and Jian, a double-edged straight blade. Those are the two great swords of the four weapons that Anthony was talking about earlier. So Denise Avina Mendez closes out her routine, and as you said, possibly lacking that crispness. That um, oh, looks uh, like there's her, uh, her failed aerial. Yep. At this point, this would knock her out of the standing. Well, wow, you're right. Such a high level already. And that would be also a deduction for additional support. That's a point two deduction. Along with missing that series of Nandu primates. It has got to that level already. We're just halfway through the competition. Well, just just over halfway. 7.74 in the end for Denise where any mistake, any single mistake in that deduction should be enough to knock you out the medals. Such was the great performances by Zara Kiani, Yi Li, and Hiju Xiao. And this is Roberta Palmer from Italy. Sword work after. There's <laughs> some bells, but it came off just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit shaky there as well. Yeah. Forget that the Sander competition is already in flow and is taking place in the evenings in Russia. So after the Taolu 
watch out on the IWF YouTube channel for the Sander competition with Robin Black and Tony Sims. And that is, if I'm right, at the semi-finals. And it's very interesting. So we look at the replay there for Roberta Palmer's uh, routine. Um, a lot of looseness, should we say? Yeah. Yep. Not a quite as tight. Um, you know, the rhythm is very, uh, very monotone. Yeah. Didn't help accentuate her speed. It looks like her. 8.25. Now, as we said earlier, the three medal position is currently filled by Hiju Sio with a 9.65 at gold, Zara Kiani with a 9.56. Just behind her by 0.1 is Yi Li from Macau. But still to come in the list, in the field, we have. Um, some competitors that did very well in the women's Chan Chuan, that's Zhu Wang and Teo V. Diong from Vietnam, Keiko Yamaguchi from Japan, so maybe, just maybe, those medal positions will change. Right now, though, it is Stephanie Lim from the U.S. Stephanie's our most experienced athlete today. I was actually going to ask her. She's been competing at the international level for about 10 years. It's going to help with her mental focus as she starts. It goes through her routine. Having that experience. Drop there. Closes out her performance. It was compact enough. But as we said, a very high bar to aim for in today's competition. Just looking at some of the highlights of that. Routine from Stephanie Lim. And we're about to get the result from the judges. And of course, that will include all of the uh, deductions and deduction codes. Looks like the judge is having yep. some te technical difficulties. Looks like the C judges are standing up. Might be looking over the, the codes of the deductions. Well, now they're moving back to their seats. Now the athletes, when they submit uh, their their non uh, sheets, these are already put into the computers. So right. Those computers just head sitting in front of each of the judges. It's a custom Wushu scoring system. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie Lim is just going to have to wait it out as those technical issues are taken care of. It looks like everyone's back in position now. Now, while we have 8.20 is Stephanie got the end. 
Looking at those deductions, Anthony, what do you see? She has 130, um, and that's kicking height. And it looks like she lost a series of her yandu. Yeah. yeah. These athletes, uh, when they submit, they have to perform their nandu in the precise order they submitted. So there might have been some discussion on placement, possibly. Now here's another one of the favorites, also from the Korean team, Gae Young Ja. Looks like she then is slightly angled. Just outside into those dance. Nice change up in rhythm there. Right. Fast movements. Quick with her wrist. Seven will get you silver. Right. Yeah, that's how close it is. With that, with that split deduction, she might be down there. A nine point five four. How close is that? That puts her into fourth spot, just missing out on medals. So we've had a there it is. With one deduction for her splits. It's the only one. Yeah. So here is Brazil's Michelle Silva dos Santos. Shaky on the balance as well. Just a little bit stiff. In the background. Yep. And that's a weapon drop. Well, that means, of course, he's definitely going to be out of contention. Mm -hmm. Point three deduction. Ready? 
Yeah, perhaps it was nerves, perhaps. There's, there's so much to think about, of course, when you get on that mat. And the whole point is, as you said earlier this week, is to not actually think about it and let the muscles in the body move based on memory more than anything else. Because you literally have no time. You spend hours and years practicing. Exactly, yeah. Just, just so you can make sure your memory, your muscles have that memory. Yeah. score for the other mat that's being watched by Mario Martinez and Alan Tang. 8.16 for Michelle Silva dos Santos. Now, as I said, still to come, we have three contenders who might be able to break into that medal tally. But first, winning Yan Ki Chai from Canada. Another up and coming athlete, first international appearance. And once again, that music is from Mat 2, that's the men's Haji Chuan currently going on. Solid down there. Right in front of the judges. Some balance also right in front of the judges. Yep, right in front of the judges. Of the mat. 
automatic opening. Very crisp. Yamaguchi, fourth in the Chan Chuan earlier this week. Actually, looks like she's slightly limping off yeah, the mat. Yeah, maybe from the splits. The splits at the beginning of her routine. Do you think she carried think it that was, ankle? It, it might have been from the last one that she did. The aerial splits. Yeah. So strong. Well, definitely, yeah, definitely looking fine there. So must have been near the end of the routine, and obviously just showed some true grit. Could have been there. Wow, it's quite a serious knock that ankle's taken as well. She's going to definitely wait to find out the result, but has played through the pain. The medical team on hand, as you can see. It was probably a pull. Still waiting for a result. This is an unbelievable scene. Definitely looks like quite a serious pull, but obviously not a tear, I'm thinking. Got wait. She's anxiously waiting. Yeah. She'd, she'd rather stand than sit. Exactly. Being supported by her coach. And just the judges are still deliberating. And Keiko Yamaguchi is definitely in some discomfort 9.62 is gonna get her even with that injury into the medals in second spot and now of course she takes second place seat. and it's looking yeah like the left knee wow Anthony what do you make of that it's pretty this, serious yeah this happens Medical staff are going to have a look at it now. And at least now, this is Tiopi Jong who picked up sixth in the women's Chan Chuan for the 9.51 earlier in the week. And she was a second place. That's right. At the last World Wu uh, World Wushu Championships in this event, and also second place at the Tala World Cup. Very nice. Step a contender for medal standing. Well, it's now, of course, 9.65 for Hiju Sio. And 9.62 for Keiko Yamaguchi in second, which means Zara Kiani's 9.56 just makes it into third spot as of now. So 9.56 or more needed. Nice jump outside, 362 sitting stance. that floor using the entire length and breadth of the mat. Looking very confident. 
Well, I can't just tell you. I can just see off to the side of that mat that the men's Gunsu field are forming up. That's the next competition on mat one. And this completes Vidong, the field for the women's Jiansu. Now, all that remains is this result and whether this result will be enough to break into the medals. He's had some good performances throughout the week. Nine point four zero, and that's not going to be enough. Looks like she got two deductions: one for swaying and shuffle skip, or and one for a landing. And of course, by closing out the field, that means that Hiju Xiao has taken the gold here on mat one. And Keiko Yamaguchi, even though in pain, has taken silver. And Zara Kiani has herself another medal, just the 9.56, and it's a bronze. She's going to be very happy with that, I'm sure. And of course, brings her total as an up and comer up to 18 medals over the last few years, which is pretty amazing. So there's the full result list. That's 9 to 16. And as you can see, dropping into the eights here. And Katy DeLoyne is the only athlete to be under seven. So quite a high level of competition. And we just saw that bronze medal going up a bit more. Now, next up, as you can just see them being middle of your screen, moving on to the mat. This is the men's Gunsu. Now, I did want to ask you, um, Anthony, mm -hmm. the difference between Nangun and Gunsu. So, the both staff, the Nangun is southern staff, so Gunsu just means staff art. The word right. Su is art or style. And um, so, what you're going to see in between both of them is the way they hold their staff. The southern staff is held closely uh, with the right arm leading, and the Generally, with the northern style, the Gunsu, you'll see the left hand leading. Right, okay. Now, the prerequisites within uh, a Gunsu routine, um, assuming, of course, lots of stance work, and mm -hmm. but um, more on the hitting as opposed to right. the lateral the hitting, swinging? Uh, there's a thrusting movement, there's swinging movements, um, cloud staff that goes yep. around. That's above your head. Now, first up, Abbas Toure. Large list, as you can see. 42 competitors have been on the start list for as you see. So, very active, very powerful. Great spectacle, of course. That actually looks like Like we're starting with Henry Yuji Nakata yeah, right, of yeah, Brazil. Yeah, that's right, sorry about that. It is Henry Yuji Nakata. Now we've seen him in action this week as well. He's going very close to the top. Definitely a top contender. He was invited to the Tawa World Cup. They have the top eight athletes. Placed the 16th this week uh, with a 9.30 in the men's Chan Chuan. So 9.30 is going to be his personal score that he'd like to better. There's his required meetings. Outside 540. Oh, like a, a bit of, yeah. Right, a little touch forward for his stance. That one's a little bit better. Yeah. 
figure eight required movement. Looks like a loss yeah. of grip. Yep. Yeah. I've noticed that there is actually a grip on the staff. Mm -hmm. as well. This is the required movement. Well, we can hear that swing from up here in the commentary position. Whip through the air. So our first competitor, Henry Eugenio Carter from Brazil. And he, of course, by being the first competitor, is going to set the opening bar. But there were a couple of deductions in there that were noticeable, even from up here in the commentary box. Looks like he might have a loss of grip and a shuffle deduction. Yeah. So 9.20, we do start with a 9. That is going to get him the current ranking of one. There are some very talented practitioners and competitors in this list. Here's one of them right now, Ahmed Hulefi from Indonesia. Uh, we've already seen him pick up a silver medal in the men's chunch one with a 9.64. And he was also fourth in men's Dao Tzu with a 9.64. So let's see what he can do with the gun. dynamic introduction. You immediately feel that power. Very high jump. 540, check outside. And that's a figure of eight. Well, whether it's Dao Chu or Chan Chuan or Gun Su is just very solid. Very sharp. Movements. to showcase your power. A lot of upper body strength is Ahmed. Right. Very sharp performance yeah. by Ahmed. Yeah. And this might very well set an even higher bar than the 9.20 we saw in the opening performance from Henry Yuji Nakata. Just looking at replays on that solid throughout, and also very powerful as well. Right, wow. setting the bar really high with a 9.68. Um, you just see now all the other competitors looking at that scoreboard going, wow. Okay, so essentially, as I understand it, Anthony, that now means that to get gold, you're pretty much going to have to have a near, well, one, possibly two maximum minor deductions. Right. Um, looks like he had zero deductions, and that just left it up to his B score, right. which is determined right. by those judges for overall performance. Now this is the first of, I think, four of the Mexican contingent that are going to take part in this event. Right. Luis Felipe Alvarez Rosas. Jump outside 540. Now the Mexican team is very strong on the Bronto staff. Yeah. Well, 9.11 in Chan Chuan earlier in the week. But if I twist the splits, very nice. Now, Luis has been practicing Yushu since three years old with his father. He made his international debut in 2006 at the Pan American Games in Toronto. There are so many Wushu championships around the world, all of course tied in together with 
various federations and the international federation, but this, the pinnacle of all of them. Just joined us, this is the 14th World Wushu Championships from Kazan in Russia. Stance. Very powerful athlete. Yeah, again, showcasing that power. I think that would be some of his uh, the team support. Yep. yep. <laughs> Must be a very big team. 9.55. This is turning into a quality competition and we've only had three people on the mat so far but already a very high score already yeah no deductions well i'll tell you one thing if luis felipe alvarez rosas was getting support from the team you're about to see someone that's getting support from the entire auditorium it is one of the russian athletes and every time they've stepped on the mat every one of their movements has been praised by the home crowd here in kazan this is sergey bakudinov very sharp Inka. So 9.21 in the Chan Chuan. 7.8 jump outside. He's been one of the few competitors at this tournament to be 7 point. Another 7 point jump inside. Oh, how about that for guts? Two 7.20s almost back to back. All right. And the other successful athlete was, was this China. Wow, what a story it would be if another Russian medal could come from Gunsu. Can it if she not? Very nice. Where he picked up a silver. Pavel Muratov has picked up a bronze for the host nation. Looks like he might have taken too many steps on that aerial, but we'll see what right. judges come on to that. Very nice jump inside the ball. Yep. And that's powerful closing. Oh, right. And there Very is powerful the home performance. support. So just the steps you saw. But any other? Nope, I didn't see any other deductions. Um, Keep in mind all these running Nandus usually yeah. requires four steps. Nine point five nine. And that is gonna put him into second place. Second place after Ahmed Hulefi. So it's looks like one deduction for kicking height. I think we actually saw that before in his previous charge one as well but of course there have been a lot of people on this right. mat so it's very difficult to kick uh very high doing the 720. Uh, so this is norlens adi Catolico from the philippines and we're going to see if he can keep this nine run going because we've had four athletes that have got on the mat all four have scored nine or above 9.20 9.64 9.55 and a 9.59 Nice air control. So Nolens showing a good display of power. Yep. Very nice figure eights. Faster competitors. It's a very 
very pacey routine. That rhythm, as we said, at the top of the program is being looked at by the B judges. Overall performance, choreography. So, Norlentz, Ardi Catolico from the Philippines. I wonder if we're going to see another nine. Oh, there's this yeah, last there group. A little slip there. But that wouldn't be considered 9.46. Let's put him into fourth, and that does keep that nine run going. If you do lose your grip like that, that's not a full uh, weapon drop, obviously. Right. So it's a minor deduction. Mm -hmm. It's a considered a 73, and that's the that's just a uh, loss of grip, or if your weapon hits your uh, your own body. Now this is Siwei Zhou and Lim from Singapore, and he's been having a great 14th World Wushu Championships. Was sixth in the Chun Chunchuan with a 9.56. He picked up the bronze medal in the Daotsu with a 9.65. So, let's see what he can bring to the table. Final score 7.24. Athlete number 18, Antonio Lim. Nice, five forward jump outside. level in the other disciplines but it's just a different momentum of the staff mm -hmm. and moving it at that speed right it's just a whole different set of problems or challenges I should say that you have to face with that central style in the middle of it a lot of synchronizations necessary with your wrist yeah. and your weapon Full weapon drop, we'll probably see him drop under nine. Right. But it was probably going to be too much to ask for every single one of these competitors to be over nine anyway. Highly unlikely. It's, it's possible he can still get above nine up from the, the other parts of his right. performance, right? His Nandu look pretty solid. Uh, only deduction I see is at point three from the weapon drop. And there you go, 9.32. Exactly right. just goes to show in terms of the ranking and the adjudication that you can still score quite highly but of course with the other people Ahmed Olaf you're already setting a 9.64 that's what we said earlier one mistake is going to put you down to mm -hmm. round about 9.32 without and that mistake he would have been second place just right behind Ahmed well of course he has, he has already got himself a bronze medal in the Dashu so Hector Miguel Toledo Toledo from Chile Right. Now, 
Bus, when I say leave box, I don't mean <laughs> that literally, you know, like literally right. leave itself. Obviously, it still has to be connected to the competitor. Deductions for staff would be the figure eights leaving uh, too far from the body. But haven't seen anyone so far. Yeah. That. Well, as you can imagine. A lot of power to wield this stuff. And all in all, pretty good from Hector Miguel Toledo. Toledo. Now, this is somebody you should have an inside line on from Team USA, Dominic Chow. Right, uh, Dominic Chow's from Maryland. He his international debut was 2010 uh, with eighth Pan American Games. Final score, yep. And he's coming up next with 8.63 is actually our first. Eight for Hector Miguel. Actually saw Dominic yesterday on the training mat. He was just getting ready for this event by the looks of it. And he was actually um, being coached by Tony Sims, who's in the commentary box for the Sander competition that's going to be continuing this evening at the semi-final level. And Tony isn't actually his current coach, but Tony has um, taught him in the past. So, Dominic Chow. Is this his signature event? This is one of his signature events. Very strong in the broads or staff categories. A lot of power, a lot of explosive power. I think more than ever in Kunsu that opposing arm being used for balance is so necessary. Right, not only does it help balancing the form, but it's also good for control. Yeah. by Dominic. Yep. Let's see whether he's going to get it up to 9.68, which is what Ben Hulefi has put up on the board. 9.31 for Dominic. 9.31 with two deductions, two 73s with loss of grip. Wow. So, we have 9.68 from Ahmed Hulefi from Indonesia up front. 9.59 um, from Sergei Batrinov. And also a 9.55 from Luis Felipe Alvarez Rosas. And they look to be leading the way at this point. Next we have Nicolas Orso from France. Well, we saw Nicolas earlier on the competition as well.
0.64 in the men's chanchuan. Last we'll stumble, stumble back, yeah. Got two of those. Well, the weapon toss caught well. Very nice. Well, whereas some of the other competitors have been slipping the grip. Nicholas, no problems in that department. Once again, you can just see the wood bending through the air, the more power that's put into it. Nice empty stance. Oh, good, solid performance from Nicholas Orsal. An entry level up to bronze is currently 9.55 in the end looks like with one deduction for 70 and the horse stand sliding that you missed now up next Hibiki Beto who we have seen pick up fifth place men's chanchuan with a 9.58, and one of the contenders for this. Right. Just been Definitely an up-and-coming athlete. He's been practicing since he was four. Unbelievable dedication and determination. And this is what he's been training for. One minute and 20 seconds in front of the international panel of judges at the World Wushu Championships. Of course, being a young athlete as well, I'm sure there's a few more world championships in him after this, so. A different start for Hibiki. Right hand. Nice jump on side right. right in front of the judges. Right in front of the judges. On the line, in fact. Very nice speed. Yeah, that's some great rhythm in there. A lot of support from just his team, but the rest of the other contenders as well. Go. And that concludes his routine. Excellent display of power throughout yeah. his whole routine. Well orchestrated throughout. We said earlier, 9.55 is the current level you need to hit bronze. Five nine as well from the Russian athlete Sergei Batrudinov, and currently the standings being led by Ahmed Hulefi with a nine point six eight. Now it's Hibiki. Wow, nine point six six is going to put him right behind Ahmed Hulefi in second spot. 
That, of course, means... He looks really happy right there. Yep, he looks very happy indeed. And that means that Sergei Batradinov's 9.59 is now the bronze medal level. And that level, just as we've seen throughout the week, just keeps getting higher and higher. Plenty of competitors. This is Zwan Hiep Tran from Vietnam. Also the another yeah. medalist. Yeah, exactly. The, the, uh, the Vietnamese okay. have brought a great contingent to Russia this week. They've been proving it. Look at that for power. Seven twenty jump outside. Wow, very nice. Not his first jump. Definitely raising the standard for the difficulty movements, along with Russia. Well, it certainly looks like Swan Hip Trun wants to score in all three areas. Looks like that staff just got caught. Oh, we can literally hear that through our headphones up uh -huh. here in the commentary box. Speed and power. And once again, that's this great energy transition from the center of the body out through the arms. Oh, that's the end of his routine. There was, there was that. Uh, catch of the, the staff in the middle mm -hmm. of that routine. Is that going to cost him a lot? Uh, it's going to cost him 0.1 if the judges caught that. That's a 720 jump outside. That's a wonderful way to start. So, Swan Hiep Tran from Vietnam has put everything into that routine. And 9.59 or more. At the Tallinn World Cup, he placed third at the 9.62. So we'll see if he can top that. Final score 9.54. 9.54 with that 73 deduction. 9.54 it is for Zwan Yep Tran. So that's going to put him in fifth spot, just behind. Luis Felipe Alvarez Rosas from Mexico, 9.55. Now, this is Curtis Filmer from Great Britain. He's also been in action this week in multiple disciplines. Curtis has been practicing since he was 13 years old from Northern Ireland. Outside 540. Yep. Well, definitely looking to spend a lot of time in the air. Wow, Splits. just yeah, looks like a little bit swaying on the landing. And it looks like the staff touched the floor, so it's additional support. into the final section of his routine. Weapon wow, toss. the weapon toss again. Very nice catch. We saw him do that earlier in the week in the Dalsu tournament. stuff from Curtis Wilmot. I'm just talking about earlier in the week while Curtis waits for his result. 
Just to go through day one, of course, the men's and women's Chan Chuan, the women's Tai Jian. Day two saw the men's Dao Tzu and the women's Xiang Tzu, the women's Nan Chuan and the men's Nan Gun. Day three, which was yesterday, um, saw Ante and myself looking at the men's Dian Tzu and the women's Tai Chuan. And Mario Martinez and Alan Tang are watching on Arena 2, the other mat, uh, women's Nan Gun and men's Nan Chuan. All of those competitions you can see at uh, 7.98 for Curtis Fulmer. Just take you and put that into the list of scores that we're getting. And what were the deductions for that? So it looks like so they caught that additional support, the splits and horse stance, right. as well as a few of his Nandu jumps not going through, probably so from under rotation. This is Nesta Zanqui Mila from the Spanish team. He was the first place contender for this event in Spain earlier this year, and he's been practicing since he was 16 years old. Looks like it's one of his stronger disciplines. Just held that. And it was a weapon toss. toss. Wow, that was a difficult move to execute. And that's going to cost him a lot. And that's going to cost him a great deal. Gutsy move to try. And a second weapon toss in the middle. Now the question is, if if you've missed a weapon toss the first time, will your second weapon toss count? Um, that second one that he had was not uh, an actual Nandu, toss, right? right. Yeah. Uh, the first one, so most weapon toss, or all the weapon tosses requirement is either a back sweep or um, another Nandu maybe being, or a tumble yeah. or a jump outside. Within the actual right. throw, yeah. So and it's that's usually trying to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, everything else Pretty much according to plan for Nesta, just that. A big weapon toss that went wrong. And as you can tell, the massive end of Nesta's reaction to it. We we're talking about you know, keeping that mental focus. This is going to be it here. Well, that was his opening. That's where he just catches it himself, which is good. Here it is. Wow. Credit for just picking it up and getting on with the job, but 8.67, it did cost him a lot in the end. Now, this is one of the contenders coming up next. Currently ranked in 11th, Nesta, with that. And he understands what went wrong there. This is Chen Ming Wang from Chinese Taipei. He plays second at this event at the Tower World Cup with a 9.63. Athleticism, wow. Check out side 540. Very nice control. And a good combination of moves so far. Right. All well, complex sequences. Yeah. Put a lot of thought into this for sure. All right. Very nice choreography. As you said, 
before Anthony it's all about accentuating yourself and your skills and definitely this combination of moves and this choreography has put him up slightly apart from the rest of the right. candidates so far well done from Chen Ming Wang from Chinese Taipei now let's see how it resonated with the judges and of course it's not just about resonating with the judges let's also see what the judges saw within that routine stances that were slightly high or slightly low kicks that were slightly high or slightly low there's a myriad of different things that they would be scoring and once again 9.68 set by Ahmed Hulefi it's our second contender on the map that's leading the way for gold 9.67. Oh, how about that? Or just as I said it, 10.67. Right. Just Looks like it really did resonate well with the judges and was also complete. Very close at the top. Yep, just 0.1. Point one. Yep, point 0.1 between each one. Point zero 0.01. What would have been great is if we could have seen a picture of Ahmed Alefi's face when he saw that. It was like <laughs> point 0.1. That's it. That was close. Tiny yeah, move. That pushes Hidiki Beto down to third place. Yep. And that, of course, pushes the 9.59 from Sergei Batrunov down to fourth. So it is a 9.66 for bronze, it's a 9.67 for silver, and it's a 9.68 for gold. <laughs> Doesn't get much closer than that. If you are thinking at home, what happens if any of these athletes are tied as we watch Eric Anthony Long from Canada get into his routine and then it will come down to their difficulty moves and how they were executed but we haven't seen that yet this week that would be the tiebreaker in a sense I held that well just to show the position of the body move through the stuff it's very easy to have your eyes tracking towards the actual boom but you've got to remember that all these stances and to get that power in there means the power has to transition through your body very nice performance. solid stuff from eric anthony long from canada but as we've said it is not just a high bar it's a very close set of three bars for gold medal and bronze and as we look at the replay of Eric Anthony Leung I can tell you that the on mat two right now the competition has changed from the men's Taiji Chuan and that's a 9.34 by Eric Anthony Leung with two deductions for four stands and missing his non -Li. Next up, we have Chirag, Sh Chirag Sharma. Sh Chirag Sharma from yep. uh, India. That's right. The Indian team have also been doing very well. I can tell you, not just on the Taolu mats, but also on the Sandalay Thai. They've made it through to the semi-finals, and those semi-finals will be taking place tonight, this evening. So do tune in to the live stream with Robin Black and Tony Sims. Power immediately off the start from Chirag. Seven twenty jump yeah. inside. Looks like he bounced out of that. Now he's been practicing since two thousand five, and his international debut was the twelfth World Wushu Championships. So, a veteran of this carpet. Well, 
Wushu Championships, of course, a biennial event. It happens every two years. And it's definitely had six years on the circuit. speed and a lot of pace in his routine so far. Stance work looking okay to you? His drop sense a little bit, a little bit high. This one's also a little high too. It's a good observation. Mm. Well, I was thinking. Well, He's probably going to get a couple of deductions for that. Let's see what else. And his 720 right here. It looks like he's off yeah, the short. Yeah, big stumble. That's right. And you can hear 9.07 is what India has picked up. Here on the other mat with Mario Martinez and Alan Tang. And just in the background, you can see in the top of your screen, is the Women's Dao Shu tournament that has now just... The Women's Nandao. Oh, sorry, the Women's Nandao. Stand corrected. I'm assuming we would have the same difference between Nangun and, right. and Gun Shu. Dao being that straight-edged, sorry, curved blade. Single edge. Now this is Amir Mohammad Rezai Arekama from Iran. We just saw earlier on Zara Kiani taking bronze in the women's Janshu. A big side split. I think he cut himself well. Into a fall. We've seen him do that twice already. Definitely his signature move. Showing the metal once again. Nine point five three for Amir Mohammed Rezai. Now up next, one of the medalists from. The doubt the men's doubt who tournament 9.68 got Edgar Xavier Marvello the silver medal. Seven twenty. Oh, he thought, gonna, yep. he thought he was going to do something big. It looked like it. Very quick uppercut, figure eights. Looks like Stop. a little step. A little bobble. That's going to cost him. You've got to score high. 
Bommel could really cost him 9.67, 9.66, and a 9.68. That is the silver, bronze, and gold medal standards. Some great many nines in this field so far. A little twist. Very late in his routine. Of course, if Edgar doesn't do it, his teammate, Akben Hulefi, is leading the standings. And that, of course, would be the second gold medal for Indonesia after Linswell's gold in the first gold for Indonesia at the women's Taiji Chuan yesterday. The rest of his routine was solid, but there was that bobble and a mm -hmm. couple of little creeping things. Uh, 9.20, as you were saying earlier, um, Anthony, it's, you can get away with it. You can still get a, high, a nine, but on any other day, perhaps right. I would have got him into the top five, but he's currently ranked 13th with that because of the high level of competition. Looks like he had 270 deductions for both uh, 720 and 360 jump inside stances. So, another from the Mexican team, Alejandro Guerrero Becerra. And as we've seen with the rest of the Mexican team, we're expecting a lot of power in this performance. <laughs> Waste absolutely no time with that. Inside splits. Once again, is Team Mexico getting behind him? Well, sitting in front of him on the mat. Lots of powerful strikes. A nice change in rhythm. Yeah, just shifting through the gears. Then the empty stance, both stance, three stances to close out the routine for Alejandro Guerrero Pachera. This is when he switched up the rhythm in the middle of his routine. Point nine three. If you miss his first jump, as well as a kicking height deduction. Now, just as was the case in the women's Jansu, a lot of quality competitors still left. And I wonder if any of them are going to be able to attack that 9.66, 0 0.67, or 0 0.68 that is currently the silver, gold, the bronze, silver, and gold. Yeah. And a lot of great so lots of contenders. Yeah. We've got Russia, China, that's right, and Korea. I've got two athletes from China turning up. And China topping the medal tally right now here at the 14th World Wushu Championships in Kazan, Russia. Five gold medals, straight golds. This is Mattia Di Maria from Italy. And that Azuri blue. That is so oh, it's just associated with pretty much all the national sports of Italy. Once again, a great shout for Italy and Europe. It's one of the hundred odd countries that are taking part this week.
to his first stance. On the air, jump inside 540. And he's controlling his movements. Very nice combination behind the back. Less pacey than some of the routines we've seen, but carefully, consciously going through what needs to be done. Definitely more controlled. Yeah. Probably to, has to avoid losing grip. But with that, sacrifice a lot of pacing and speed, as you mentioned. Yeah. So, looking through that. Some complicated staff work, which could have easily gone the other way. Have to make sure he got a nine straight. And that puts him in 16th spot in the rankings. As I said, for a lot of these athletes, not necessarily about winning medals. It's about the next step of their career. It's about the next. Right now. Huge hometown support expected. I'm going to have to raise our voices a little bit because I have, I have a funny feeling that every move that Vladimir Maximov makes is going to be greeted with a bit of a cheer from the home host nation. Outside combination. Looks like there was a bit of a stumble. 720 jump inside. Nice success rolled. Oh, this is solid. And speedy as well. But not rushed. That's the main point. It's got pace to it. Mm -hmm. so Vladimir was the top eight, one of the top eight athletes of the last World Rookie Championships. Also invited to the Tower World Cup. So definitely a medal contender. Well, 9.67, as we said, is the entry level to the medals here. Russia already with one silver from Tatiana Ishivna and one bronze from Pavel Muratov. And they would just love a 9.68 here. Great control, the staff showing that one-handed as well. 9.23, he's not going to get a medal, he's ranked 12. Looks like his deduction for his first jump outside, four stacks. like three deductions based off that one jump. So this is Daniel Naves Gomez, the third athlete from the Mexican team. Also a national champion. Bronze just earlier this year. 
the international debut in the 2012 Pan American Games. Very good. Now, I didn't change the, f the his feet kind of changed when he landed that. Very nice jump outside with a cloud in midair. Yeah. Oh, he touched much. himself. Yep. yep. You just really see with the with the gun when it does that. Unlike the swords, which are very difficult to, to point out, mm -hmm. but it really just changes the entire vector of the staff if it touches you. So, ends up Daniel Navarez Gomez. A couple of things could have gone better, definitely, in that routine. I also thought that maybe when he landed, he was a little bit closed up. His right. shoulders may be a bit tight. That's what the B judges would be looking for, how relaxed he is, yeah. uh, how smooth he is, and har how harmonious he is with his staff. It was almost a bit like he was chasing the routine a bit. 8.97 reflects those observations. Ranked 18th now. Now, this could be... <laughs> Looks like China had dropped out, and we're looking at Macau's Nakin Wu. Yep. We've seen him earlier in the competition as well. Nakinwu is one of the favorites or within the group of favorites in this 42 strong field. Crisp slap. Held that very well. And he whipped through the air. Jump inside splits, very nice. Like he paused for a second in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice change of it in pace. Mm. So, knock in, woo. Pretty solid performance. Question is, can he break into that 9.67 club? I'm really not exaggerating when I say club. 9.67, mm -hmm. uh, 9.66, and 9.68. That's what you need. And there he is with a 9.26. And there's that. Pause part from hitting himself. 73, yeah. reduction. Or lost grip. So, another contender we've seen before. Brandon Porfirio da Silva, very powerful contender. And that power, he's going to have the perfect platform to showcase here in the men's Gutsu tournament. Brazilian team. Ah! Oh, we 
we did comment before that he has been a very tall competitor. Just look how relatively small the gun looks in his hand. Look the amount of power he's putting into it. Very nice twist, good control. And that was a great snap of land as well. Oh, bobble yeah. back. Yep. those figure eight. Very low stance. A strong performance yeah. by Brandon. Definitely. It looks like that stumble may cost him. Now, do you find, Anthony, in, in tournaments, especially as you move through the tournament, you warm up and your performances would get better as you move through? This is yeah. now day four, of course. Uh, I definitely think the first event that you have kind of calms your nerves. Yeah, once you've been out on the mat once, and then after that you get a little bit more mm -hmm. liquid in terms of your thinking and movements, and that's what it's about. One seven for Brandon Porfirio de Silva. With two deductions for one for kicking height and a stumble, and his four stance from that jump outside that, that he moved back on. So up next, so you no, know, this is Yong Jun Lee from Korea. Now he was placed tenth in the men's chun chuan, the nine four eight and sixth in men's Daotsu with a 9.60. So this could very well be one of the contenders to break into that 9.66 club. And he's currently at the top of the standings. Well, 9.68. Jump outside 720. Change up in rhythm there. Very nice pace, speeding up. Fast to electric. Oh, we Very did say, aggressive. Yeah, we did say there was plenty more still to tell in this tale. And perhaps Yong Hyun Lee is the person to really put the pressure on the top three. and that should round off his very strong performance. Korea again really pushing the bar up. We'll see if they actually have indeed. Some of the highlights. Very nice control in the air. And very solid landings too. This could very easily be a high score. Nine point seven zero, and that is going to take him to the top of the heap. And you can Looks see how happy he's happy, made yeah. it. 
He is absolutely ecstatic. He's still holding his head because that has taken him right to the top. And that, of course, mm -hmm. means that Akben Hulefi is now in second place with a 9.68. And um, 9.67 is the bronze medal level now. So that even that's yeah. gone up. It's like he's the first non-Chinese athlete to score 9.7. That is incredible stat. So it's Chen Min Wang now with the 9.67 that's in bronze. Akbar Halefi from Indonesia in the silver medal position with 9.68 and a 9.70 from Yong Hin Lee. Here we have Domenico, Domenico Giordano. Giordano, yeah, one of the two brothers from Italy. It's actually one of the other great little exclusives you can find on the IWF YouTube channel if you want to find out about the Giordano brothers. There's a little video on that. Hear the crowd cheering again for Russia. Yeah. Oh, that's actually Tatiana Ifshina on the other mat, which has been watched by Mara, Mara Martinez and Alan Tang. Of course, Tatiana Ifshina brought them Russia a silver medal earlier in the week. Oh, good little switch there from Domenico, and that closes out his routine. Another strong performance, mm -hmm. a strong athlete. Just looking at some of his jumps, sitting into the cross leg set. 9.33 for Domenico Girano. With two deductions, one on kicking height and one on his drop sets. Uh, rank him 11th currently. And if you just hear the home fans and support their athlete on that other mat, that's been happening all week around here. Great support. And shout out to all the fans that have turned up here at the Gymnastics Palace in Kazan. Kazan, historically, the sports capital of Russia as it's known. Hosted some very big events. And now it's hosted the biggest event in the Wushu world. This is Amir Ibrahim Abdul Rahman from Egypt. He's just begun his routine. Wow, a big sway and a stumble back there. Uh, actually yeah. moved out of the, the ring there. Yep. So that's it looks like he might have stepped out. Costly, costly error. None of those. One. Oh, that's such a difficult landing to make with the gun. Just crossing the back from. A lot of power, but possibly too much in terms of his ability to control it. Switches the pace down a little bit. Nice figure eights. Well, I think from the power, the show of power to start it off, he went into the handling. He did that pretty well. Maybe rushed just a tiny bit at the end. 
A little bit of disappointed look. Yeah, I think he's definitely seen something in his own performance. Well, that was the That's big one. Right. I don't actually think, looking at the replay then, he did step out, but it was a big and stumble. So that's definitely going to cost him. Eight point eight five. It's going to leave him twenty fourth. And Amir Ab Ibrahim Abdulrahman is going to know exactly where that came from. But looking at the deductions, Anthony, definitely. You're, you're correct. He's got two deductions for um, for seventy. So both of his stumbles uh, in both of his stance work, and he lost both of those stances as well as a deduction on his drop stance. Now this is Tse Hong Lao from Hong Kong. Placed 8th in the men's Chan Chuan with a 9.52. Very different starting from the left side of the carpet. That's right, we've seen a lot of people start center and right. Very nice landing. No increase in pace. Yep, increase in speed. And that grip has to be absolutely rock solid. You just saw the flexing of the staff then. Oh, a good way to end that. Oh, I wonder if he's put himself in contention. There's still a few more sizable names that could be taking to the mat before the end of this competition. But has Tse Hong Lao from Hong Kong done enough to get into... 9.62. Close with Close. No, yeah. no deductions. Let's put him in fifth. So, the fourth member of the Mexican team, Luis Alberto Chure de Jesus. A relatively newcomer. He started in 2004. He's been practicing for 13 years with his international debut at the ninth Pan American World Championships. Excuse me, Wushu Championships. Yeah. Change of rhythm. Nice figure eights and uppercuts. Conclusive routine from Luis Alberto Garchure de Jesus. Women's style shoe. Competitor number one into the arena. And 
as you've heard from Nandao, it's moved to Daoshu on the other mat. Now, Luis Alberto Chura de Jesus is 9.51 for him. Close again, but not quite. And of course, he's going to put that up against some of the other. Right, with no deductions. So that was solid enough performance. 9.55 from his compatriot Luis Felipe Alvarez Rosas. That was 8.93 from Alejandro Guerrero Pachera. 8.97 from Daniel Naves Gomez. So good showing. Now this is Hassung Lee. He got the silver medal in the men's Janshu and ninth in Chan Chuan with a 9.51, well 9.60 in the Janshu and 9.51 Chan Chuan. So he could very well be a contender here. Very nice. Get outside 540. And don't forget his compatriot and teammate is currently topping the uh, and that landing looked a little bouncy, but I think the line was straight. His compatriot uh, Yong Hyun Lee is topping the table now with 9.70. Rakhman Halefi in second with 9.68. Scala uh, speed. And what's interesting to note is uh, he's one of the few athletes who's competing in uh, a separate short weapon event. So he competed straight sword, usually they would compete spear, but you see him right. participating in the staff category. <laughs> oh, good solid hips. Solid as always from Korea. They really do come to compete at every championship. The whole team. Now, he's actually walked off the mat looking a little bit disappointed with himself. Maybe he saw a couple of things in his routine that he wasn't happy with. Any serious deductions he saw? No serious deduction that I had saw other than that, that split. Yeah. Um, but it looks like he may have just caught himself, so it looks good to me. So a 9.67 is what's needed or more if you're going to get the medals. And of course his compatriot Yong Yun Lee, as you just pointed out, the first non-Chinese athlete to get a 9.70. Definitely very close at that top. Yeah. Tight competition and now it's really going to get to this palpable tension mode that we had yesterday. So we're just awaiting the decision. And I can just tell you that if you, oh, we have this little gap. 9.65, close, but even with a 9.65, that on your screen says it, ranked fifth. It's a score that could easily win you another competition in another time. So next up we have Renato Bao from Belgium. Renato's been practicing for 16 years, and basically half his life, he's 32 years old. Once again, I'm just always in awe of these stories of, you know, how much dedication and training and determination has gone into. You really do need to dedicate your lifetime to Wushu. And of course, if you do it, you will gain a window into ultimate control of every part of your body and mind, all powered by your soul. There's a little bubble there on the, uh, on the landing. Mm -hmm. Just a 
stumbled back a little bit. Yeah, the way the, the scores are, that may just yeah, be too, too much. much. No. Yep. Oh, oh, that was another a big one. bubble. So it's definitely out of the medal contention now, we're thinking. Well, that also looked a little bit loose. So more trouble with the footwork more than anything else. Right. And carrying too much power into the jumps, obviously. It looks like the, the, those series of flowers right there might have been a little bit too much at an angle. Yeah, kind of looked like he rushed through a couple of movements there as well. So it's getting a little bit more loose as it goes through his shaky there. routine. Yeah. His Drop stance a little bit too wide, not close enough. And that looks a bit too high as well. Yep. The empty stance. So Renat about obviously looking more for experience rather than getting into the medals. He put his best on the mat, but at times there the power was just too much to control. 7.04. Looking at his deductions, got those two bobbles and two stance work. It looks like he missed most of his difficult movements, and he only put five. It seems like he wasn't going for the full two at yeah. all. So this is Mario Sanchez Martinez from Spain. Once again, great to see Spain on the Wushu front. They are such a sporting nation, of course, with world champions in tennis, um, previously in F1, of course, football. They are very varied. Wow, uh, that looked like it was a bit of a catch. Yep. Still a little job to do in the Wushu scene, of course, but to have them represented here means great sporting tradition. 540, jump outside. Looks like just made it. Very nice air control. Serious other cuts. Oh, looks like my cut again. You will see that's why some athletes will slow down. Uh, yeah, just to make sure, yeah. Those certain areas they know that they want to go quick. Well, he has got a lot of upper body strength and, uh, hitting. Has been working for him. Includes the routine for Mario Sanchez Martinez from Spain. Again, great to see a smile on his face. He knows he's made a couple of mistakes. He's just shrugging to his coach right now and while we watch the replays. Nine point zero two, even with all those deductions. So this is Melvin Tan from Australia. We've seen him in action earlier this week as well, as we have with most of these contenders. A couple of new faces on day four. Uh, generally speaking, everyone is eased now with the 14th World Wushu Championship. This is his shining event. He placed first at the 2016 Oshana Regional Wushu Championships. A signature event for Melvin Tan.
540 jump outside. Looks a touch short in rotation. Yeah. Good power for Melvin. Right. Good speed. Yeah, right. Good hand control as well. stumble there. Yeah, and he also changed his grip as well on the staff. Wasn't that noticeable, but did lead to a slight delay in his movement. We really can't stress enough the amount of fluidity that's needed if you're going to start getting up to the top of this list. So Melvin Tan from Australia finishes his routine. Height deduction and looks like that under rotation. Right, so I jump outside 540. So now we have Singapore's Yi Sang Yong. Had a pretty good showing in the men's Chan Chuan, seventh, scoring a He was also invited to Tower World Cup, being one of the top eight at the last World Wushu Championships. Placed fourth at the Tower World Cup. Well, Singapore currently 11th in the medal tallies. Just one bronze medal earned. Nice rhythm. Jump outside 540. movements. Yep, very quick as well. And explosive energy. Oh, that was a very nice sequence there. Good energy in this routine. Right. Oh, Singapore again shouting for what could be their second medal, but it's going to have to do pretty well. 9.70, 9.68, and 9.67 from Chen Ming Wang. Those are the three medal levels, or grades, I should say. You see his foot dig into the carpet right there in that replay. Definitely a lot of yeah. control in that landing. Yang Yong from Singapore awaits 
his result. There'll be one more competitor after this, and it's going to be one of the home athletes. 9.57 for. That's going to put him in eight spot. Yi Sang Yong. So still no medal yet. Looks like his only deduction is the 30 for kicking height. Without that, his no score one. would have been a 9.67. So another Russian athlete gets onto the mat here in Kazan. Ilyas, he's needed off. At times we've seen him before, he's been very determined. And if he can pull off his routine just right, then perhaps this could be another medal for Russia. Good opening. Nice catch on that 540. Himself up. Five four oh, 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 jump inside splits. <laughs> oh, he's definitely making sure that those jumps are coming off. And this is what we were saying about warming up as you move through the week. We've seen Ilias in action early on. Those jumps weren't quite as crisp. This time. Very nice. Wow. Inside How about that? Cool. And he's absolutely firing on all cylinders now. Are we going to see something sensational here in the last competitor in the men's Gunsu? The catch looks like his stance might be a little too forward there. Right. It is going to be a high level of competition. And even though this is a pretty good performance, it might not be enough. But we shall see. That concludes the men's Gunju field. I'm just looking at. Well, this was an incredible move there. Flip himself back up. There's the aerial. Spent a lot of time in the air, and just as you said, just a little bit forward on that stance when he right. came down. 9.59, a good showing, puts him in seventh, but no extra medal for Russia just yet. Right. Looks like they deducted him for that stance, for the horse stance being a little too far right. forward. So in the end, that means that Akbar Hulefi has won Indonesia yet another medal by getting the silver, and of course Korea have picked up with that 9.70 from Yonghyun Lee, uh, the gold medal, and that's confirmation of that. And Chen Ming Wang from Chinese Taipei gets uh, Chinese Taipei another medal with 9.67, but look how close that is. 9.59 to 9.70 in the first um, 10 by the looks of it. Six, well, it's the first yeah, eight. Yeah, very close. It was a rich competition indeed, and as the judges shuffle their way uh, off to the left, and that brings us to a close on mat one. Now, of course, there's more action happening on mat two, and that's the women's Daoshu still continuing as we look at the 70 to 24. Siwe Jo and Lim, of course, had that um, uh, weapon problem, and that's what it cost him. A lot of these uh, scores said still a lot but of nines. Yeah, yeah. pretty good. In pretty fact, good. only Curtis Filmer and Renato Bao that were sub eights. So a good result and a good competition all in all from the men's Gunshu. So we will be back with the victory ceremony for both the women's Jansu and the men's Gunshu after the conclusion of the women's Daoshu on mat two, which um, I urge you to watch actually. It's currently being watched by Alan Tang and Mario Martinez and is of course live as well on the IWF YouTube channel. We'll be back in just a bit.